So Bill, why don't you walk us through some of the chart markups that are included in the front of the book? Why don't we start with Walmart? Okay. Well, Walmart we picked for this because it was one of the great winners of all time. Um, we show the first cup with a handle that occurred in June of 1980. And it's a classic 23-week cup with a handle. And um, we show exactly where the stock breaks out of, of the handle area. And that was down around a, a split adjusted price of 10, which was really around 40 at the time. But we adjusted the chart for all the splits. So from 10, it ran to 80 in the space of just a couple of years. So this is obviously a, a pattern. Gee, you better learn how to recognize that pattern. It's a classic. It, it's a one that we've got eight or 10 examples that are exactly like that. So uh, we can define the patterns. Um, this happened to be 23 weeks. Some can be eight or 10 weeks. Some can be 40 weeks. Um, but they tend to have the silhouette of a of a cup, if you looked at it from the side view, there's a left-hand part that averages five to seven weeks on the downside. Uh, then it rounds out for a few weeks along the bottom, moves up, and then it moves into the upper half of the pattern and then goes sideways building its handle area. And when it comes out of the handle, the volume should increase at least 40, 50% on the day it breaks out of the handle. And um, then, um, on this particular chart, it ran up a little bit and went right sideways very tight for three or four weeks and came out again, Is it, which gives you a second place where you can buy and add on. You don't want to add more shares than you bought the first time, but you want to add. So if a stock is working, you want to wind up with a little bit more money in it. Now as this stock progresses, it uh, about doubles. And we marked up another cup with a handle that showed up in March of 82. And uh, we've marked that the fact that uh, on these particular charts, it shows a big earnings acceleration in the quarter uh, that that base was being built. And incidentally, we overlay the NASDAQ or the S&P average so that you can see what kind of general market these patterns were formed in, and we learned from building models that the patterns, the successful ones, 80 to 90 percent of them are formed because the market itself is in a correction mode. So this is kind of interesting for somebody to learn that when you're seeing a market correcting and you're getting all worried and bothered and everything, just remember that all the new bases are forming during this period, and as soon as that market turns, they'll be coming out of there, and at the time that's happening, you're usually scared to death because the news has been so bad and, and your stocks have gone down and you're upset and, and see your emotional involved rather than reading the charts and seeing what they're telling you. So this one breaks out and uh, it was a split adjusted price around 21 <clears throat> and it goes uh, further on up as we're going toward that 80 objective that we mentioned. And then there was a, another base that was a nine week base that formed a little bit later on. So. Um, you find that some of these stocks can go a lot further than you think if you learn to buy a pattern that's strong, that has good earnings, uh, that, that shows strong sales, and the, and the industry conditions are fine. So there are characteristics, and you learn to read those. And I think Walmart has a lot of very clear examples that people can see that very easily on here. Bill, one of the other things I wanted to mention was that in the new book, Many of the charts do show an extended period of time so people can get a better sense of how the stock's overall run-up did look. Well, that's right. We try to show the pattern just before it took off and ran, but we want to show that movement. How far did it go and how, how did it handle itself? And we have a little 10-week uh, moving average line, and you can see that sometimes these stocks bounce off of that line two or three times, and it's an additional buy point when it pulls back to that line. Um, so. Uh, yes, you, you see the pattern and then you see what happened afterwards. Let's take a look at Costco. And I know I've heard you talk about this one at some of the IBD workshops and you've mentioned how this one came to your attention when you heard about what Saul Price was doing in San Diego. Yes, uh, I was in San Diego with a friend and, and happened to go out and look at uh, one of Saul Price's uh, price company stores. 
And um, I was really very, very surprised because they had 20 checkout stands and and there must have been 15 or 20 people in each line and they didn't have the little wire baskets you see in most of the supermarkets. They had these gondolas that were huge and they were, they were just stacked with all types of merchandise, usually a couple hundred dollars worth of things. And I realized right there that I was looking at something that was totally unique and far superior and they were very, very busy. And um, when I went back to Los Angeles, uh, we tried to get a chart on, on uh, Price Company and <laughs> there weren't any available because at that time it was so young and so little and it was just trading in the San Diego market. So we were able to get the prices from some of the traders down there and we plotted up our chart. And at that time the market was in a correction and it was going down and going down and we watched it for three or four months. It just kept going down and suddenly it formed a double bottom. Now that's one of our uh, nine or ten basic chart patterns. It was a perfect double bottom and when it came up out of that we started uh, getting interest in the stock and this was one of our early purchases and it had a 15-fold advance. This is Costco. This is quite an interesting story because we did very well uh, you know with a 15-fold advance and in price company, but uh, Saul Price was getting up in years and he sold the company out uh, to Costco. But the Costco uh, CEO was one of Saul Price's original partners in, in, in the development. So this one builds up a pattern and it builds a perfect cup with a handle, the, the Costco. And for some reason or other, we missed this one. And I, I, I'm going over that one because I think it's, it, it tells you a story that the innovators just keep coming and coming and coming and, and you've got to be on top of it, you've got to be paying attention and you don't want to miss something like this. Well here's a perfect cup with a handle and the chart pattern is exactly like Xerox was back in 1963. So one of the things you can do uh, in this book is we have a chart pattern of Xerox in 1963 and we have one of Costco and you can look at them and see, gee that's the same. Um, and so the more you know these patterns, you will tend to recognize the next one that shows up that's like it. And of course, this one comes out at a split adjusted price, looks about seven and a half, and it goes to 60, which is probably an eight-fold advance. So uh, not only did price company go up 15 times, but Costco turned around and, and did almost the same thing, and we missed the second one because we weren't on top of the job. Now, uh, even if you miss the first base, it goes up and, and a little bit later on, uh, after it moves 20, 25 percent, it goes flat sideways, very tight. Uh, it's a, what we call a flat base for it looks like about six or seven weeks. And there's a position to add to it. Then there's another 10-week base it forms. And then quite a ways up the line, after it's more than doubled, uh, it shows some big ex earnings acceleration and builds another cup and uh, it gives you a chance to, again, double your money from that. So. Uh, some of these unique leaders can go a long ways and have several different bases and so if you miss it the first time keep tracking it and eventually another base may form and allowing you to enter at a logical time that your probability is, is better that it's going to work. You were talking about innovation. The last chart we want to look at here is certainly a company that's been innovating more in this decade and this is Apple beginning in 2004. So maybe you can say a little bit about this one. Well, um, we picked this stock up right straight off the chart on our weekly review on a weekend. Looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and it was a perfect cup with a handle. And um, we were a little reluctant because at that time, this is uh, around $10 on a split adjusted basis. And this was back in March of 2004. You'll find it in How to Make Money in Stocks. It's a, uh, a, a big uh, full page chart that you can look at and study that cup of the handle. It was exactly right and the handle was very, very tight. Had four weeks in a row closing exactly at the same area, just drifted down slightly. But, but the problem, the company had had a, a pretty shaky past in the prior two or three years. So we were very reluctant and not uh, quite understanding uh, is this really something good because it had been kind of poor in, in the immediate past. But again, the chart does not lie. It shows you what's going on. It's saying this stock is under accumulation. It took us a month or two to figure out what was really going on there, that there were some new products and all. 
But that was the beginning, and of course that went from a split adjusted 10 to uh, only 190. So I guess that was quite a bit more than 10 or 15 times. And you had a second base forming, and that second base uh, had a very important clue right in the middle of the base, had an enormous volume week that it closes, it bounces off the 10-week line and closes up for the week right in the middle of the pattern. That's telling you some big institution stepped in and bought a ton of that stock right while the market was correcting and, and the, the thing held up and then came out of that base and it doubled real fast. Then it corrected and built another one. And um, then back in, in September of 06, it had another base, came out of that, and it tripled. Uh, and there was a, another base midway on, on the way up for that. And finally, it topped by having a faulty base that only corrected one week on the left-hand side. And when you just get one week correcting on the left-hand side, most of them will fail when they break out. So usually you have at least two, three, four, five weeks on the left-hand side. So this was an abnormal, and it was also a third or fourth stage base, which tends to not work, and it broke out into new high ground on low volume. So that was a point to sell the stock, and it went into its correction that, uh, incidentally, that's when the general market started correcting in uh, not November of uh, 2007. So when the general market starts giving you selling clues and then a stock shows this, the combination of the two, it's almost impossible for you not to recognize it and back away from the stock. All right, thanks very much, Bill, for showing us these charts. All right. If you want to see more charts like these with insights from Bill O'Neill, you'll find them in the updated fourth edition of How to Make Money in Stocks, available now in bookstores everywhere.